Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and Senator Warner for your kind comments about John McCain. And what is not often remembered is John McCain wrote some of the really important rules of the road for the internet when he was chairman of the Commerce Committee. And it was always bipartisan, so I very much appreciate both of you uh, mentioning our wonderful friend, John McCain. And Ms. Sinberg, Ms. Dorsey, welcome. And uh, I've enjoyed um, visiting with you. And let me go right to the question that is foremost on my mind, and that is consumer privacy as a national security issue. Technology companies like yours hold vast amounts of very private information about millions of Americans. The prospect of that data being shared with shady businesses, hackers, and foreign governments is a massive privacy and national security concern. The Russians keep looking for more sophisticated ways of attacking our democracy. Personal data reveals not just your personal and political leanings, but what you buy, even who you date. My view is personal data is now the weapon of choice for political influence campaigns and we must not make it easier for our adversaries to seize these weapons and use them against us. So I'd like to see if we could do a yes or no on this, and I wrote it because I think we can. My view is from this point on, beefing up protections and controls on personal privacy must be a national security priority. Like a yes or no, Ms. Sandberg? Yes. Mr. Dorsey? Yes. Okay. Let me turn now to a question uh, based on a lot of analysis my office has done and you all have talked to us about it. We have reviewed Facebook privacy audits required by the 2011 consent agreement after your company was found to use unfair and deceptive practices. One section of the audits deals with how Facebook shared the personal information of Americans with smartphone manufacturers. These included the Chinese companies Huawei and ZTE. I found portions of this audit very troubling, and the findings could affect many Americans. I believe, Ms. Sandberg, the American people deserve to see this information. Will you commit this morning to making public the portion of your audits that relate to Facebook's partnerships with smartphone manufacturers? Senator, I really appreciate the question and the chance to clarify this issue because it's really important. With regards to the audits, our third-party auditor, PwC, does audits on a rolling basis every two years, but they're continual. They're given to us. We have shared them with the FTC voluntarily, and we will continue to do that. I can't commit right in this moment to making that public because a lot of that has sensitive information, which could help people game the system, but we will certainly work with you to see what disclosures would be prudent. But Let, let's, let's do this, because that's a constructive answer, and I've got other things I've got to cover. Um, I'm just going to assume you will work with us. We understand the question of redaction on sensitive national uh, security matters. Can you get back to me within a week with respect to how Facebook will handle what I think is troubling information? Um, we're going to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, we can definitely prioritize this request. So we'll do it as fast okay. as we can, depending on the volume of requests everyone has. Thank you. And look, so you all know where I'm going with this. To me, protecting data privacy has to be a higher tier issue in terms of national security. It's going to be the foundation of the legislation that I've talked to both of you about it. So that's why I feel strongly, and I think your answer is constructive, and hope we can get that quickly. What I also want to get to with um, you, Ms. Sandberg, is the issue of micro-targeting to discourage voting. This is one of the most powerful tools in the propaganda arsenal. 
going after individual Americans with ads and really lasering in on the ability to affect political campaigns. It's certainly been used in the past with the Russians to discourage minority Americans from voting. Would Facebook's current policies prohibit using micro-targeting to discourage voting? Senator, we feel very strongly about this. There is a long history in this country of trying to suppress civil rights and voting rights, and that activity has no place on Facebook. Discriminatory advertising has no place on Facebook. So what are you doing to um, prohibit this micro-targeting? I mean, what about ads that share false information about the date of the election or the location of a polling place or ads that tell people they can vote with a text message from their phone? You have said that it's unacceptable to target minorities and others, but I really need to drill down more deeply in knowing, because I think this is a primary, we can get bipartisan agreement on, what do you do to deal with micro-targeting? So with everything, when we're looking for abuse of our systems and things that are against our policies, we have a combination of people reviewing ads, and we have a combination of automated systems and machine learning that help us find things and take them down quickly. Right. I'll hold the record open for that. Could I have, say, within a week, a written answer that would get into some of those specifics? We're going to get you answers to your questions Good. as quickly and thoroughly La as Last we can. question deals with foreign governments aiding hoaxes and misinformation. And I'd like to get both of you, in fact, why don't you start with this, uh, Mr. Dorsey? Do either of you or your companies have any indication that Iran, Russia, or their agents have supported, coordinated with, or attempted to amplify the reach of hoaxes? Dorsey. Of hoaxes? Yeah. Um, we, we certainly have evidence to show that they have um, utilized our systems and gained our systems to amplify information. I'm not sure in terms of the definition of hoax in this case, but um, it, is, it is likely. Okay. Ms. Sandberg? Um, just two weeks ago, we took down 650 pages and accounts from Iran. Some were tied to state-owned media, and some of them were pretending uh, to be um, free press that they weren't free press. And so it depends how you define a hoax, but I think we're certainly seeing them use misinformation my, campaigns. My, my time is up. The only other area I'm going to want to explore with you is we've got to deal with this back and forth between the private sector and the government. Very often, we ask you all about things you're doing, and you say, we need the government to also help us get to ABC. And then the government says the same thing about you. We'll want to explore that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the extra time. I want to thank you both. For